This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at how you can do post estimation of humans from Wi-Fi signals. This is an interesting work from researchers at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, this paper was published on 31st December. So the idea over here is that, okay, instead of using any cameras or instead of using lidars or any other kind of radar sensors, just with Wi-Fi signals, okay, if you have a Wi-Fi transmitter and a receiver, just with the Wi-Fi signals, can you actually detect the pose of humans, right? So, so it's a dense pose estimation, okay, just from the Wi-Fi signal. So it's pretty interesting work over here. Previously also there were publications on using Wi-Fi to actually detect human presence of humans in a room. But this is about dense pose estimation. Okay. So let's look into how they are doing this. Okay. At a very high level. Okay. So the problem with say RGB cameras, LIDAR and radars is that uh, they are affected by occlusion and lighting. Okay. And radar and lidar are expensive technologies, need specialized hardware, power intensive, whereas Wi-Fi is very common. Okay. So this work has extended the use of Wi-Fi antennas for body segmentation and key point detection. So they are exploring that over here. Okay. So they developed a deep neural network that maps the face and amplitude of Wi-Fi signals to coordinates within 24 human regions. So that's the idea over here. So how are they doing it? Okay, so what is unique over here? How are they doing it? So one thing which is of importance is in all Wi-Fi based perception is based on something called channel state information. Okay, it represents the ratio between the transmitted signal wave and received signal wave. Okay, so that is uh, what it depends on and how do they do it? Okay, so let me directly go to there this thing. So this is how they say is the layout of Wi-Fi devices and human bodies. Okay, and based on this, you can get some kind of, uh, you know, this channel state information samples. Okay, so there is this three by three dimension corresponds to three into three transmitter receiver antenna pairs. For instance, E1 denotes the first emitter and R1 denotes the first receiver. Okay. So what they are saying is that by incorporating five consecutive complex valued CSI samples under some 30 subcarrier frequencies, they get two input sens uh, tensors to the network, 150 into 3 into 3 amplitude tensor and 150 into 3 into 3 phase tensor from the Wi-Fi signals, channel state information from that. Okay. So this is an assumed setup where you can have say three emitters and three receivers. Okay. So now uh, what they do over here is they have explained about the CSI signals, its sanitization and all. I wouldn't go into the details of this. Okay. But the idea is that first you, they have a particular encoder uh, network, right? Over here, right? Something called as a modality translation network. That is this piece, which takes this Wi-Fi phase and amplitude part of the signal the CS, in the CSI domain. Okay. It does some processing on these features and then converts it into a 128 into 720 into three channel, you know, features over here. Okay. So this is the feature map output. It is in the image domain, similar to an image domain. Okay. So this is a modality translation network. Details are given over here, how it works. There are two encoders, one for amplitude tensor and other for phase tensors, which takes this particular input 150 into 3 into 3, five consecutive samples, 30 frequencies, three emitters and three receivers. Okay. From that, they then have uh, transform it into a CSI latent space features. Okay. Which is what happens over here. And using encoder decoder, they convert this into a image domain kind of features. Okay. So that is the details which is given over here, right? 4D conversion up sample. And finally you get this feature map in low dimension size of 3 into 720 into 120, uh, 1280. This is because they wanted it to map it, match the dimension of commonly used RGB image input network. Okay. So now you have some kind of an image features. So the next clever thing which they did was 
once you have an image feature okay this particular 3 into 720 into 128 scene representation in the image domain they can use image based methods to predict the uh, uv maps of human bodies okay so for that what they use is that they adapt a network structure similar to dense pose rcnn since it can predict the dense corresponds to a correspondence of multiple humans in an end to end fashion more specifically they have something called as wifi dense pose rcnn okay so we'll go to that uh, particular thing what happens is that in that you have a resnet fpn a resnet architecture actually over here right that is the backbone so that we are, then what it will go through is it will go through a region proposal network basically and then there is a region of interest pooling then they have two heads one is called key point head and a dense post head okay from that they do refinement and from these heads they identify the basically your pose of dense pose of humans okay that is the idea over here right details are given over here i will not go into the details of uh, that but the idea is that okay so they have two branches dense pose head and key point head estimating key point locations is more reliable than estimating dense correspondence so we can train our network to use key points to restrict dense pose predictions from getting too far from the body joint of humans the dense pose uses a head uses a fully conventional network to predict human part labels and surface coordinates within each part the key point head uses a fully convolution network to estimate the key point heat map the results are then combined and fed into refinement unit of each branch where each refinement unit consists of two convolutional blocks followed by this thing the network outputs a 17 into 56 56 key point mask and a 25 into 112 112 iue map basically the location map kind of okay uh, so basically the modality translation network and the wifi dense pose rcn are trained together so it's an end to end training where they train this modality translation network as well as this particular your wifi dense pose rcnn they also make use of a teacher network to a teacher student kind of network to translate from an image based teacher network to wifi based network okay so you also have images which are fed of the scenes which are fed to a basically resnet image dense pose rcnn you also have the student network which is from wifi signal so in this way they are using transfer learning losses to improve this wifi signals transfer learning from an image based teacher network to a wifi based student network so in this way they are able to actually do dense pose human estimation from wifi signals okay so i would not go into further details of the data set and other things i will link this paper you can look at it uh this looks like a very clever idea of uh, you know how you can convert from say one modality wifi uh, domain to your uh, wifi signal domain to your image domain and in used uh, something like an image based uh, you know network right um, uh, you know dense pose rcnn image based thing on this wifi signals to actually which have been transferred to an image domain kind of image domain to actually do dense pose estimation quite an interesting paper okay so then they also show some of the cases where it fails uh, you know uh, let's see i had seen an image yeah so, so these were some of the cases where uh, failures happened some rare poses okay if there are three or more uh, concurrent subjects you see that some estimation is not done over here of the key points and the legs and other things over here or uh, you know three or more concurrent subjects over here in that case also there are some failures which are happening over here okay so in conclusion what they say is that uh, they uh, demonstrated that it is possible to obtain dense human body poses from wifi signals using deep learning architectures which are commonly used in computer vision so instead of training a randomly initialized wifi based model so if you do supervision uh, based on image and you know image domain uh, based uh, network in a kind of the distillation between the teacher network and student network if you do that the performance is improving that's what they are saying over here okay uh so how they improved the efficiency is using this key point detection branch uh, utilizing the csi phase transfer learning from an image based model 
It is still limited by the public training data in the field of Wi-Fi based perception under different layouts. In future, they want to collect multi layout and extend this. Okay. So this is an interesting idea when compared and it is more privacy friendly when compared to uh, it is illumination invariant. Okay. Uh, and it is a cheap human sensor compared to RGB cameras and LIDAR. Okay, so this was about dense body estimation, uh, dense uh, body pose estimation, dense pose estimation from Wi-Fi. I hope you like this short video on this particular interesting research paper. I will link in this paper. You can read over it. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video. Happy learning.